Lives, property and businesses worth millions of naira has been lost in six days due to human errors. From Anambra to Lagos State, it has caused pains for many citizens who are affected by these incidents. The people of Anambra State will not forget March the 31st, 2015 in a hurry. That was the day that a fuel truck killed over 60 people in Onisha, the state's commercial nerve center. What I want to say to tanker drivers is, and what we've been doing to the parks is uh, to make sure that uh, the, their vehicle is uh, uh, very well taken care of. We've given instructions to the uh, road safety <coughs> to stop and check on the uh, uh, vehicles that are not roadworthy and stop them. Those at the scene of the accident say that the problem was compounded by the inability of the fire service in the commercial city to respond promptly to the fire outbreak. Lagos State, Nigeria Southwest Region. Residents of Iyanokwaja living along the Lagos Apeokuta Expressway woke up in the early hours of the day to a fire which also left destruction in its way. The general manager, Lagos State Safety Commission, Mrs. Odebomi Dominga, says citizens must be very careful, especially when handling products that are highly inflammable. If you look at this incident, you know, there's, there's an ignition here. There is a rubbing. There is an impact. So that's the basic thing to avoid fire, whether at home, at work, or even on the road. We'll have to carry on with the advocacies um, because really regulating independent homes you know, can be slightly difficult for the government to do. But we can do that if, if, uh, if we do get complaints about, um, because sometimes we do get complaints from neighbors who have become more safety conscious and the report incidences of unsafe practices of their neighbors to us and we intervene. We use that opportunity to enlighten them. She also advised the people to take safety precaution very serious. Furthermore, one of the ways the Lagos State government is also looking at intensifying the enlightenment of, of being safety conscious is the intervention with the community development community, um, centers and agent um, association. Experts attribute the recent fire disaster in some parts of the country as man-made. Now they are advocating safety education awareness as a way to begin curtailing this worrisome trend. Joining us now on the News at 10 is uh, the chairman, Nigeria is Institute of Safety Professionals uh, Engineer, Timothy Iwagu. Good to have you join us. Uh, quickly, now solutions are whatever is what everyone wants on this particular matter. Uh, how well can the truck drivers uh, safeguard themselves their communities, as well as the precious cargoes? I think uh, the problem with the truck drivers is um, using routes that are not actually designated for them. We have very little streets, some link roads, are not supposed to be used by trucks, laden with volatile hydrocarbons. And now we are very shocked to see trucks rolling off, like what happened at Yenek Maja. And um, you see these trucks load, and they try to go to the uh, uh, discharge points uh, just to make shortcuts because the scarcity. And uh, they are trying to sell at high price. So what to do is to really educate these drivers. And there should be control, but I don't know how this control can be affected when most of them say they are independent. They, they are not under anybody's control. And they move this product, especially the scarcity, and people need the product. And there's black market booming. So they try to go into some remote corners that they shouldn't be, and at very odd hours too. Shouldn't we also be talking about the mechanical state of such vehicles? Yes, uh, roadworthiness. Uh, well, we talk of roadworthiness for vehicles, but we should also look at 
uh, vehicle worthiness for the road, whether the road is also worthy to take a vehicle or the vehicle is worthy to move on the road. Because we have very bad roads and we have very poorly maintained vehicles. So we talk of hazards as uh, anything that has the capacity to cause harm. Uh, the, 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 the material or situation could be acting alone or in conjunction with other factors. So now if you look at it, the, the truck in bad state, maybe the road also, because this truck went by the edge of that road and rolled off to the slope. That's the one on the, the one Yanabaja. On the, on the Yanabaja. Now the one at the dim was on top speed. So I believe on that speed, negotiating that bend, uh, there could be some uh, disorientation. And uh, of course, this is the wet season. So probably the road was wet. And when the road is wet, the fr frictional coefficient between the, the road and the tires is reduced. So brake efficiency becomes another factor. So look at, the, we are talking about loss incurred. So what can be done? Uh, what can be done is this, because um, looking at, uh, we talk of safety. Safety and security issues must be embedded in the system from the design and construction stages. The roads must have a distance. Of course, we have statutorily, in line with the, the, the standards, the road where people must start building, there should be some 25 meters or so. But today we see buildings just being part of the road. But for the immediate uh, well, solution, are you also thinking of uh, driving schools and instructions for some of these drivers? Yes, we, 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 we need to get these drivers, get the organizations that, uh, that employ these drivers and make them come with them for training. Uh, sometimes the people see these trainings as um, not um, serious issues, but um, we need to learn. It is through learning that we have uh, uh, some change in behavioral pattern. So the way they conduct themselves is now affecting society, and it's terrible. The, the, the loss incurred so far cannot be quantified. Engineer Timothy Wagu, thank you for coming on thank News you. of 10. Thank you very much. On the value rate, Professor Walesha Inka has laughed out on members of Boko Haram, describing them as enemies of sound knowledge. Professor Shoinka, who delivered a lecture at the third convocation ceremony of the Kwara State University, uh, titled Science and Language, said so the terror of insurgency is a problem for all. It must be kept head on. He also described the agony, humiliation, and trauma the abducted Chibo girls experiencing in the hands of the captors. Cyclists, projectiles, from whom assembled explosives, the original creator, creation of minds whose ingenuity the current terrorists cannot even in their approach. Faith, science, and the arts of the imagination can cohabit, indeed, already can collaborate in the mission of human advance and even our spiritual intuitions, which we call religion. All contrary claims have a proven emptiness distortion and delusion. The perverted will to impose and dominate and the stagnant, though lethal presumptuousness of aliens and sacrifice. The temple of learning must be protected. There is no other option for the ultimate triumph of humanity over bigotry and hate and the solid foundations of the edifice that must house the community of learning. Harmful use of alcohol, unhealthy diet, and obesity as some of the predisposing factors for high blood pressure. Tonight on our Focus on Health, our correspondent Yomi Otaibe takes us through the importance of checking and controlling blood pressure levels. and bustle. For many people, as far as there is no physical pain, there is no stopping. 
But did you know that there are some medical conditions that do not show any visible sign until it's too late? Such is the case with hypertension. The World Health Organization estimates that more than one out of three adults have raised blood pressure. But how many people do know their blood pressure status? I know the checker. Why don't you check your blood pressure? I don't have time. Do you know your blood pressure status? No. I don't know. Why don't you check? I'm not opportune to check. I don't have the time because early in the morning I come out to hustle. Then late in the evening time I go home and rest. Uh, blood pressure sometimes, like my own, is sometimes it goes up and it comes down. Maybe sometimes, maybe because of the stress, it goes up. And a little bit it goes down. Sometimes 90 something, sometimes uh, 150, 160. When it is 160, I'm always shivering. So it bothers me. So, but are you getting treatment? Actually, yes. I consult my doctor. My interactions with a couple of people out here seem to suggest that a number of those that do not check or know their blood pressure levels outweighs those who know. A consultant cardiologist thinks this is not good enough. Hypertension is a purely silent medical condition. Most times, people who have high blood pressure do not have any clinical symptoms that strongly suggest that their blood pressures are very high. So most people, about 50% of people, don't even know their blood pressure readings. How much you want to know whether those readings are hypertensive or otherwise. So a lot of people walk about you know, with blood pressures that are very dangerous, dangerously high. Whenever I have a blood pressure above 140 over 90 in a consistent, persistent manner, the individual with that blood pressure is said to have hypertension uh, or high blood pressure. So, so we're looking at the values between 120 to 129 systolic, about 70 to about 80 you know, diastolic, said to be normal. Then that means between 130 to 139 is pretty hypertension if it's systolic. And between 80 to 89 is diastolic is um, pretty hypertensive you know, value. When it comes to hypertension, a group of people in the general population to also look out for is the pregnant women who can be susceptible to pregnancy-induced hypertension. There are risk factors for, for this, and um, hypertension is pregnancy occur at the extremes of age. That is, the, the younger the women or the older they are in pregnancy is a risk factor for them. The women who are carrying their first pregnancy, women who are carrying um, multiple gestation, who are carrying twin gestation, you know, carry that risk. Or women who have a family history or a personal history of hypertension have a higher risk of developing it again. For women who have these risk factors, one of the things that um, studies have shown, you know, that if they, they, are, if they, if they have a um, form of management for them before 16 weeks of pregnancy, it will help to reduce the risk of further complications from, you know, from a uh, person disease in pregnancy. That's one factor. That's one factor. So invariably, that means that women should be able to attend at another care or preferably in preconceptional care so that all these issues can be sorted out before commencement of pregnancy. Aside from lowering the risk of hypertension where possible in pregnancy, every individual needs to avoid sedentary lifestyle, being overweight, and modify choices that can affect their health, such as reduction in salt intake, and lower or cease alcohol consumption, and fatty food. Also, controlling high blood pressure is paramount. We have about um, a rough estimate of about 30-35% of Nigerians are said to be hypertensive. But we know this, this data is not you know, sufficiently accurate. We have more hypertension than our present data suggests. To understand and appreciate the importance of controlling blood pressure, you need to know what blood pressure can, high blood pressure can cause. A persistent elevation of blood pressure, which we call hypertension, can lead to stroke commonly, can lead to chronic kidney disease requiring dialysis, can lead to heart attack, leading, lead to sudden cardiac death, can lead to heart failure. These are undesirable medical conditions that eventually lead to death. And the underlying you know, problem here is uncontrolled hypertension. So if we control hypertension with drugs and with lifestyle you know, measures, we will definitely reduce the risk of stroke in the individual, risk of kidney damage, requiring dialysis, risk of heart attack or heart failure. Keeping these complications at bay depends on how often you check and control your blood pressure levels. 
a personal blood pressure measurement kit or regular trips to the nearest health care center for checks is key in defeating this non-communicable disease. You're me or Taibu, reporting for Channels Television News. Welcome to Business News. Interbank lending rate at the fixed income market was flat at 8.25% on Friday. The unchanged figure from last week comes on the heels of liquidity boost in maturing Treasury bills. The central bank withdrew about 39 billion naira from the banking system to meet a weekly cash reserve requirement and then sold 181.89 billion naira worth of open market bills on Thursday to mop up liquidity. The Apex Bank, however, injected 161.9 billion naira into an interbank market to pay off matured open market bills. The secured buy open buy back remained at 8%, compared with a benchmark rate of 13%, while the overnight placement was also flat at 8.5%. While dealers expect a liquidity drop next week as the NNPC plans to withdraw its deposits from the central bank. In a bid to drive foreign direct investment and also transform the state into an industrial hub, Governor Udom Emmanuel of Akwaibom State has approved the constitution of a 10-member technical committee for the realization of Ibom Deep Sea Port. According to the governor, the aim of the Ibom Deep Sea Port is to generate about 100,000 100, new jobs, strengthening the country's global rating in the oil and gas sector, and also forge a gateway to the rest of the world through the Gulf of Guinea. He enjoined members of the committee, which is chaired by a former Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Mrs. Mfom Usuro, to carry out their duties for the speedy actualization of that project. Attracting private sector deposits to the Nigerian capital market will provide an ample liquidity for the market. While speaking on the sidelines of the World's Economic Forum on Africa meeting in Cape Town in South Africa, Ike Chioke, MD, Afri Invest, says that capital market operations need to do more to continue to attract private sector funds. Now, the equities market had three sessions of negative close and then two days of green this week. This can be attributed to the increasing level of apathy on the part of investors. Week on week, the All Share Index shed 1.88% to close at 33,664.91, with a marginal difference of 1.44% close for market capitalization. Top gainers for the week include Costain, which rose the most by 12.77%. Better Glass followed with a 4 Naira 3 cover appreciation and then Beggar Paints that also advanced in price by just 10%. The Lagards Log had Nigerian Police Microfinance Bank, which shared 21 cover. Nascan edged lower, losing 1 Naira, and then total dropped more than 18 Naira. Trading in top three banking stocks of Zenith Bank, Diamond Bank and UBA accounted for 357 million shares worth over 4 million Naira in the market, while generally a turnover of 1.22 billion shares worth 16.94 billion Naira in 19,847 deals traded during the week. And that's it on Business News for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadusalai. We'll be back with the rest of the news at 10. Next on the News at 10, Serena Williams wins the French Open final to claim her 20th Grand Slam title. That's on Sports News. Stay with us.